And let's get back to politics with Hillary Clinton showing new signs of confidence this weekend as she tells a plane load of reporters she's no longer just putting all of her focus into the presidential race. As we're traveling in these last 17 days, we're going to be emphasizing uh, the importance of electing uh, Democrats uh, down the ballot. Joining me now to talk about those down ballot races and Clinton's expanding campaign, presidential historian Larry Sabato, of course, director of the UVA Center for Politics, and our good friend here. Larry, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So let's Thank you, look Alex. at these reports. The Clinton camp is pouring about a million dollars or so into Indiana and Missouri, uh, two bright red states, we should note, hoping to help the Democrats win the Senate and the gubernatorial races there. Is she in a position to change the map and potentially the balance of power, or do you have concerns this is a sign of premature confidence? Well, I don't think the confidence is premature. You know our crystal ball operation here mm -hmm. at UVA, and we, we currently have uh, Clinton at 352. We've had her up over 300 virtually the entire year, and this is her high point. So, uh, you know, 16 days to go. I think you could start showing a little confidence. But, Alex, the key thing about Indiana and Missouri, and this is very smart of the Clinton campaign, yes, the governors for sure, but look at the two Senate seats. They're close contests. Evan mm -hmm. Bayh is a little bit ahead in Indiana. Jason Kander is tied with Senator Roy Blunt. Mm -hmm. uh, she needs those seats. Democrats need those seats so that she can have a Democratic majority in the Senate. It's been extraordinary. Actually, the percentage increase in Missouri alone over the last week has been about 20 percent plus. Uh, so evening up that race, certainly. And we should just note for anybody who was listening to your number 352, that is relative to only 270 of the electoral votes needed to win the presidency. Um, in a TV interview that you made this past week, Larry, you made a stunning prediction. Um, despite an electoral map, which puts pollsters in, in Clinton's favor most of all, you are predicting a potential landslide. Why is that? Well, we say a landslide in the Electoral College. Right. And this is one of the great things about the Electoral College. It expands the popular vote lead into what appears to be a larger lead and gives a new president uh, a little extra boost as he or she comes into office. But look, in the popular vote, some very interesting things have been happening. The most interesting is that Hillary Clinton is now apparently winning by about the same margin by which her husband, Bill Clinton, beat Bob. Bob Dole in 1996. Bill Clinton had a little over 49 percent. Bob Dole had around 41 percent. This is about the same margin. So hmm. that's pretty incredible because Bill Clinton was an incumbent. And as we all know, Hillary Clinton is going for that difficult third consecutive term in the White House for Democrats. Interesting. I want to play something that um, Trump's campaign manager Kellyanne Conway said this morning. Here she is on CNN State of the Union. Look at the stories that are being written now. Uh, the path to 270 is narrow. The path to 270 is over. That's so unfair to the voters who are yet to go to the ballot box and exercise their constitutional right to tell us who should be president of the United States and commander in chief. Let me tell you something. You go out on the road with Donald Trump. This election doesn't feel over. All right, Larry, uh, the, the crystal ball notwithstanding there, does she at all have a point? I mean, is this election seeing more than its share of surprises and bombshells after all? So anything still could happen? Look, there are 16 days left. So, of course, something could happen on any given day. But maybe it's just the failure of my imagination, Alex. But I just am having a very hard time coming up with even a wild scenario, a twilight zone scenario, whereby Trump could win the election. Now, I will agree to one thing. The assumption made by predictors like me and all the other predictors and prognosticators out there is that the uh, Democrats continue to perform as they have been in getting out their vote, that the campaign continues to make good decisions. Well, what have we seen? Good decisions and hard work. I'm sure the Trump people are working too, but their base is much smaller in most of these key battleground states, and I just don't see how he does it. Larry, when all is said and done, if Donald Trump loses this election, will there be a point that you can point to and say, this was it, it was, it was downhill after this? 
Well, I think you have to point to the Democratic convention, which really did boost uh, Hillary Clinton and built a foundation under her that supported her very tough couple of weeks in mid-September that we all remember. That's the only low point she's really had in the general election. And I think you have to say the Democratic convention was very well run, far better run than the Republican convention, which gave Donald Trump virtually no bounce at all. And then, you know, the debates, okay. Uh, the first debate was critical and, and the, you know, you can go on from there, but I would go back to the convention. Okay, Larry Sabato, thank you for saying so. Always good to talk with you. Th